Hello and welcome to another Think Bamboo podcast. This is a special podcast. This is the next generation Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ. And our special guest today is Christoph Dekans, directly from Germany. Chris, who just turned 28 like a week ago, is a previous student at the HTV in Berlin. And since two years, he, he turned the youngest lecturer at the Rhein-Main University of Applied Science in Germany and got that job thanks to his master thesis, which will be part of our main three focus. So we're going to talk about his master thesis at the HTV Berlin, also collaboration of the nonprofit organization Grow Colorful Ghana with Rabea, where we had a previous podcast. Then uh, the, the thesis is about the concept for the Bamboo Construction Education Center in Ghana, Africa. Not only, but has this part, which is very interesting, which we're going to deep dive into. The second part, the second topic here is going to be the vision of the Bamboo Construction Kit. So uh, one of the other four pillars of the thesis. It's, it's super interesting, actually. I'm super excited of this Bamboo Construction Kit. It's modular adaptable it's an ikea style instruction and it's open source so this is like this is massive really <laughs> the third part is about the bamboo seminar so um uh, it's it's a climate friendly building which is um a part of the job of, of chris at the rhein main university in germany and this bamboo seminar is international and interdisciplinary collaboration based so actually, it's like it's it's more than just like the classic seminar where you sit and listen. So you really do stuff, you learn stuff, and um, well, you learn other people from other places and all that. So um, yeah, that's it. Hey, Chris, welcome to the podcast. Great to have you here. Thanks for inviting me, Chris. Uh, JJ. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, should I introduce myself maybe a bit? Yes, um, please. I grew up close to Bielefeld. Um, now I'm based in Berlin since a few years. Uh, I studied architecture in my bachelor's in Detmold and I did my master's in international construction management. First year was in Helsinki, the second one is at the HEW in Berlin. And in the end of my uh, master's studies, I wrote my master thesis in collaboration with Gorkala to Ghana, as you already said. And based on my findings of the thesis and based on my thesis, I got the job as the lecturer at the Wine Wine University. And from this on, we are conducting um, seminars, international seminars, usually with the focus on bamboo, clay, and other renewable materials. So uh, a lot of different seminars, but always the focus on uh, how to build sustainable, um, yeah, how to um, yeah, do the research in an international collaborating way. So really interesting stuff. Uh, but my main profession, I'm an engineer at a construction company using uh, digital tools at the construction site. So quite far away from the topic of bamboo. But uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy um, doing the seminars in, in Wiesbaden together with the professor Sascha Luibold and some other uh, in, yeah, people who are always... You're, sorry? you're also a drone pilot, right? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, yeah, that's my main, <laughs> that's my, uh, yeah, main, main profession like uh, doing the 3D um, reality capturing of, of uh, environments. Awesome. Awesome, man. Um, fantastic. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a uh, great intro. So let's start with the first topic, shouldn't we? Yes, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. So um, maybe I can just introduce the idea of my master thesis. So as yeah. I already said, yeah. um, I wrote my thesis in collaboration with Gorkala Fulgana, with Rabia Schirman. Uh, she was also here in the like two or three episodes um, before me. Uh, in the master thesis, I tried to define a concept um, for the Bamboo Construction Center in, in Ghana. And I tried to define it on the specific needs of the Grow Colorful, uh, Grow Colorful uh, Ghana um, collaboration. And my research question was to develop a sustainable concept for the Bamboo uh, Construction Center in the rural uh, area of Ghana. And I had a few uh, main questions. For example, how should the concept look like in order to reach the positive effects? Uh, which challenges, which global challenge, challenges can be tackled by using bamboo in this region? And how can we implement bamboo 
in an ecological and also economical and social uh, development angel in the rural communities in, in Ghana. So yeah, just to, to use the whole potential of, of bam bamboo in, in the region of West Africa. And uh, maybe you can also share the, the PowerPoint because first I analyzed all the properties of bamboo. So um, just to, to find out what the main, um, the main good things about using bamboo are. Um, and also I try to uh, integrate two, um, two international and two global challenges. The first one was uh, the huge population growth in West Africa. And I tried to find out uh, opportunities and challenges. The second one was the climate change, the global yeah, global challenge. Um, maybe we can go a bit up in the slides. Mm -hmm. I have some slides for the two examples. Further uh, up? A bit up. Yeah, a bit further up. The SWOT. Go on. Yeah, more, more up. Sorry. Challenges. Yeah, challenges. Exactly. Uh, as I said, I try to um, to analyze the the challenges and the potential by using the two examples. Um, so first of all, there's a huge population growth in West Africa. That means we need a, we need cheap and accessible materials for the construction. So bamboo bamboo could be a good solution uh, for for this um, global challenge. Um, also because there's a huge demand in housing upcoming. Okay, so first I try to analyze bamboo in the construction. For example, the physical properties, the distribution of species, uh, the treatment process and everything around um, bamboo and how to transfer the plant bamboo into a construction material. And, yeah, and then I asked myself um, how to use bamboo for tackling global challenges. And therefore, I tried to use two examples. The first one was the challenge of the rising world population. And the second one was the challenge of the climate change and the global heat, heat, uh, heating. Sorry. Um, so for the first example, we can say uh, bamboo is a super cheap and accessible material in the construction. Um, and bamboo is located exactly in the regions where strong population growth is expected to be in the future. Uh, for example, also in, in West Africa, Ghana, Nigeria. Um, so it could be a solution for the demand in housing in the future and also a solution for people who are not able to build their own house because they don't have that much money because bamboo is cheap and accessible. So the idea was to use bamboo um, to build their own house, for example. Yeah, the second one, as I said, climate change, um, easy, cal or easy, easy calculation, uh, maybe a bit too easy. <laughs> Um, less CO2, CO2 emissions when using bamboo instead of uh, other um, materials like concrete or steel. Yeah, maybe we can jump to the positive effects also. Yeah. Um, no, I just said like we have global challenges and um, what to expect in the future. Um, I try to define. Uh, yeah, I, f I try to define the the challenges we have by implementing bamboo. So not the global challenges I talked about before. It's more like uh, implementing bamboo is, is not easy. Um, but what do we have to consider by implementing bamboo? Um, and I tried to break it down on four different aspects. The first one is the challenge of the image of bamboo. Um, because uh, in Africa, especially in Ghana, people think bamboo is the poor man's timber. So somehow we, we we need to try we need to find a way to change and enhance the image of bamboo. Um, yeah. Later we'll speak about different solutions or maybe ideas how to how to change the image. Uh, the mm -hmm. second one is the lack of awareness. So people simply don't know how to use bamboo and why to use bamboo. So we we also try to uh, try to find um, solutions to yeah. Bring it closer to the people, so they need to know why. Why should I? Uh, why should I build a bamboo? And what's the um, the main benefit? The third one is the lack of good quality raw material. So there is not a real bamboo infrastructure, as there is in some other regions of the world. So we need to also integrate and implement this in the country. And the last one, lack of knowledge. So people don't know how to treat bamboo. People don't know how to harvest it. Um, they don't know how to dry it, so we have to transfer all the knowledge we have um, to the region of West Africa. 
Um, then we can jump to the concept maybe already. And I try to summarize it. I think afterwards we will upload the, the picture of the, of the concept. Mm -hmm. So if, if anybody is interested in a more detailed concept, you can just read it. Um, yes. So first I did the SWOT analysis in order to get a feeling of where, where the challenges are and, um, how the potential look, looks like with Bamboo. Um, and afterwards I tried to, um, de define approaches, how to tackle these challenges in the concept, and they should all meet the global challenges, um, from the United, the uh, United Nations, uh, the, the different, um, symbols you can see here at the right side. Um, maybe one slide further. Slide 13 is already my summarized, um, concept. You have to read it from the right side to the left side. So the right side with the input things we have to, um, to uh, provide at the construction center. Then in the middle, the green part, it's the construction center itself. And the, at the left side side, it's the, the outcome, the potential outcome, the things we want to, to change somehow. Um, and so I defined four pillars. The first one uh, is courses and craft training. So we need to um, transfer the knowledge of the craft, of the bamboo craft, how to cut uh, bamboo, for example, how to build details, um, also how to treat bamboo, how to harvest bamboo. So there are a lot of things we need to train and transfer the knowledge to, to the uh, construction center. Um, then the second pillar is economic education. So you also need to provide solutions to, to earn money, to get a small loan, um, to calculate your own, own business if you want to get self-employed. So all these uh, economic stuff you need to know uh, if you want to uh, use Bamboo for making money, for example. The third one is research projects. So there should be research all the time, in my opinion, because research, research means we want to enhance um, uh, techniques, for example, we want to enhance connections to universities and also like if their research projects is, it's more, a bit more academic and then also some other stakeholders may be interested in, uh, yeah, being part of the Bamboo construction center. The last pillar is public relations. So if we, for example, want to change the bad image, we need, uh, public relations. We need to um, invite people, we need to in invite groups, we need to have maybe one one day per year where just um, visitors can, can come for free and check out the Bamboo Construction Center, just get to know all the potential and all the benefits of Bamboo. So I think this is a really important pillar in the whole Bamboo Construction Center. So just, yeah, um, kind of uh, marketing of, of Bamboo. And the, the last Absolutely. pillar is not... Yeah. And the last yeah. pillar is not completely integrated in the bamboo construction center. It's more, um, external. It's like the whole bamboo, um, infrastructure. So the good raw, um, for example, the good, good access to raw material, because if we don't have the raw material, there's no way to build with bamboo. Yeah. So this is, uh, my summarized concept. Um, yeah, I could go more into detail, but I think for now it's fine. Right. I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. This is very a good overview. As you said before, I'll um, also uh, upload the presentation or parts of the presentation on the blog post on ThinkBamp. So everybody who wants to see more detail can um, dive into there. And uh, yeah, that should help. Yeah, because in my master thesis, I really described every single pillar here in detail with different examples and calculations and yeah. It's, I think it's it's interesting, especially the research projects part, because I try to uh, put my focus on the bamboo construction kit, as you introduced at the beginning, uh, which is like one of my main uh, findings, I would say, in the master thesis and one of my main solutions for the global challenges. And this is our second uh, main topic here. Construction kit. So as I said, it's one of the four pillars in my, uh, in my master thesis. And I had the idea to, um, provide an open source system for people who can't afford, for example, concrete or brick houses, or who simply just want to build with bamboo. Um, so the bamboo construction kit is kind of an IKEA system. So people it, it's fast to build it's, it's easy to build. 
Um, maybe it's also adapted, uh, adaptable to the, the climate at the region and also to regional architecture. Um, it's cheap, cheap and affordable. And since we're using bamboo, it's also a sustainable um, construction system. And um, later I will explain it a bit, a bit more on the example of Mozambique. But also we tr or I try to um, yeah, make it resilient to specific uh, natural disasters. So to make it a bit more visual, um, I try to uh, write down what we need to provide in bamboo construction kits in order to to bring it closer to the people. So um, once we want to develop the bamboo construction kit, we need to yeah, provide drawings to the people. So drawings who are easy to read. So everybody is able to build their own bamboo construction kit by using uh, those, those drawings and those explanations. Also, we need instructions um, to just show how to build. For example, how to build details, how to do the bamboo cut. We also need a list of tools and materials so people, if they work, if they decide to build the to, to build their own bamboo construction kit, they need to know what they, for example, uh, which material they need to buy, which quantity, how much money it is. There should be a financing plan and all of those requirements for building the uh, bamboo construction kit on their own. Yeah, so the target group of the bamboo construction kit is people with uh, less money. So people who are certainly not able to build uh, their own house with brick and concrete, so they just use this bamboo. They're able to um, get the bamboo construction kit with all the drugs and uh, instructions. So they're just able to buy their own bamboo and uh, build their own bamboo construction kit. But therefore we need to um, first develop this bamboo construction kit because now I'd, I just did it in theory, in my master thesis. But I, I, I didn't have the time and I wasn't able to do it in my Rust thesis because it was too much to design and de development process. And my master thesis should have been more into concept based. Uh, that's why I just wrote down a lot of requirements we need to uh, consider when we want to develop a one construction kit. But I had the idea, for example, to first start with uh, three general kits. For example, the first one, first level construction kit is for. Uh, two parents, the second one is for two parents and two children, and the third one is for for a large family, for example. So we mm -hmm. at the beginning three dis uh, different systems. Um, each system can be expanded with models. So if, for example, a family just have um, a small amount of money at the beginning, they just build the first model. Uh, if they get more money, they can build the second one, or if they uh, get more children, they can always extended so it's it's uh, they start with for example system s and in the end they have system uh, xl so a lot of different yeah. um possibilities i love that it's like a lego also where you can just like build on top uh, like you build the first one and increase or or also make it smaller or separate or whatever right it's pretty cool it's yeah pretty cool. exactly and yeah. since we have the connection to um what color the ghana and also a good connection to Mozambique because we have just been there for the seminar. Then we could use this bar construction kit with all the instructions and drawings and provide the knowledge at the bar construction centers, the knowledge about how to, how to use this system, the, these drawings to, to build their own houses. So we can just teach the bar construction kit in the centers. So it could be a nice connection in the future having the um, construction kit and also a sensor uh, where we want to provide and transfer the knowledge of Bambu. Absolutely. I, I personally think this is key to uh, success for any um, bamboo education center. If, if you can, if you're able to, to create this bamboo construction kit, as you um, explained before, I really think this will like boost the, the, the entire um, uh, operation. Yeah. I mean, somehow people need to start building with bamboo and if they already have a kit and they know how it will look like they know how much money it costs and they know what to consider it's way easier to just start with bamboo because if you never build with bamboo it's kind of risky because you are not really sure what to consider where the risks are and if people know already i don't know 100 200 people build build already this bar construction kit it's quite sure to also like copy and paste it somehow but 
also there's the challenge because if you have a bar construction kit, it could be that every house looks the same. And that's what we don't want to do. That's why we have to think about variation in the armor construction kit. For example, we need to think about elements uh, which can be um, customized or individual. So for example, doors, screen doors, or other elements which could be uh, just customized. This is also also one, one uh, important and essential pillar, I would say. Because if all the houses look the same, maybe it's, it's not the best way. Also for the two um, examples I had at the beginning, so the um, population growth in West Africa and also the, the climate change. So I think this is really close to the system and the, the idea and vision of the system. So I think it's really um, this bamboo construction kit, uh, as soon as uh, it will really help to boost and help people to, to build well with bamboo, because that's one of the big challenges as you uh, mentioned before that they're sometimes using bamboo but not um, in the best way. And then the, it gets even worse because they say, oh, all the bamboo is not good, but it's because they didn't build it well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, we, we, we just had the workshop in Mozambique where we try to define all the requirements for bamboo construction kit. And in, in Mozambique, we did it with the addition of um, building climate resilient. So for example, in the future, we don't have uh, just Bamboo construction kit S, M, and XL, but maybe we also have a resilient kit, which is resilient to floods, which is super present mm -hmm. in Mozambique, for example. Then maybe one day we have a bamboo construction kit for earthquakes or storms or whatever. So there could be like extended and um, engineered on a new way and in a new system. Mm -hmm. So you have to, I think in the end, we have to start in, for example, Ghana or Mozambique with the kit. And then once we transfer the kit to other countries, everybody's just able to adjust it and edit it for their needs and from, for their regional architecture and for their climate, for example. So this was... And bamboo from, from the, like nature is uh, resilient already to earthquakes. So whatever you do with bamboo, if, if the construction uh, can stand still, it's, it's actually already earthquake resistant because bamboo is super flexible and so on. But of course, if you build like with the, the earthquake in mind, you'll, you'll focus more on possible challenges during the, the earthquake, which will improve the entire building. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then there's also the challenge about where to develop this kit. And yeah, as I said, we started the seminar in Mozambique now, where we just try to de uh, define all the requirements for a construction kit. But then we also have to think about who is going to develop this kit. Is it um, a seminar in Germany? Is it a seminar in Mozambique, where the people already know about how the people um, are living, uh, what the requirements for architecture are? Or is it an international corporation? I don't know. We, sh we still have to fix fix this uh, or discuss this um, in this way of developing the bamboo construction kit. Probably decentralized over the internet maybe yeah <laughs> maybe maybe it's Possibly. good because then we have people with different um with different uh, experiences already um, who can all like work together with their own background and uh, yeah maybe it's a good way to do it like this yeah and maybe people who have other jobs and other uh things can also like uh, like uh, help with some of their knowledge when they have time so um that's a good thing when it's decentralized and also like uh, you can work at nights when other works work on, on the project in, in the morning. Yeah, it's like much more flexible than uh, yeah. being like a work a workshop, which is two weeks or one month. And, and then everything has its positive and negative sides. But um, yeah, yeah. If, if you want to implement more people um, the other way around, uh, well organized, of course. So you need a Vicky with all the knowledge and 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 uh, all that but but it's absolutely doable yeah yeah and i think yeah. we also need to invite people from different disciplines so it should be a really mm -hmm. interdisciplinary workshop because um i think there should be architects engineers but also maybe people who know how to um connect a solar system this bio construction kit maybe people from economics who just 
know how to get a small loan for the bar construction kit or to yeah, yeah to, to define a concept or to support the financing part of the bar construction kit so yeah a lot of and different leverage things maybe you have also to the, the take, thing you know. of having a bamboo house because in some countries if you have a bamboo house it counts like not having a house because bamboo is still seen as poor man's timber so um there the challenge will be to to leverage this and say look this is yes it's a bamboo house but actually it's it's well thought it's um it has uh this and that and, and all that so also that's some of a, a challenge um you know really to, to to show them that this is a bamboo house but it has value also yeah <laughs> exactly yeah a lot of things uh, we really need to take care of and until yeah. by developing this film so maybe there are also some people who are interested in don't know um also being part of the development phase of the kit maybe um... it's the third um the third topic which are bamboo seminars so let's jump into the third main topic we have on the podcast christoph which are the the seminars you are in charge at the university in germany um can you share a little bit more um also how you got uh, the job being the youngest lecturer and um and uh, whatever you have um there um is it is it uh, how often does it uh, happen the seminar uh, this is the sixth one already i think you you're uh, having right yeah, now exactly um yes since now i organized um five seminars the sixth one now is in the planning phase it's the summer school in um, Wiesbaden in August. But we started with the first summit seminar, which was also close to my master thesis. And uh, this was developing guest houses for the bamboo construction center in Ghana. It was also a collaboration with Coca for Ghana. So in this first seminar, we just, um, yeah, we jumped into design and development phase for those uh, guest houses. We considered re regional architecture, um, also the access to, to bamboo, bamboo and clay and some other regional materials. So it was just a yeah, first step into the cooperation with Coca-Cola for Ghana, a first step for the students in getting to African um, culture, African architecture and everything like this. So yeah, I would say just a, a good start for the seminar, for the whole seminar, clever friendly buildings, uh, who are sometimes uh, based in, in this part of the seminars, but sometimes also in other um, countries. Um, yeah, so we also had the seminar in Gala and one in Um But yeah, let's let's jump into the uh, second seminar and maybe you can also show some pictures from my presentation. So the second seminar yep. was not theory, it was a practical seminar for design build in this part. So first we um, developed and designed a small construction and afterwards we had uh, one week in Wiesbaden where we together with the students built this whole construction and um, we did this in collaboration with Jan Glasmeier as well. Um, Jan Glasmeier is an architecture, an architect from, from uh, Germany based in London at the moment who is doing a lot of uh, social projects in Thailand and Uganda and he was also part of the project in Ghana. So he is super international, um, also a lot of countries, super, super well connected. And yeah, uh, I met Jan um, during my bachelor when he held the presentation at my university. And from then on, um, yeah, I, I followed him for Instagram. I, uh, yeah, I read all the updates from, from his projects. And once I started writing my master thesis, I asked him about uh, cooperations with universities because Coca-Cola for Ghana was also interested in collaborating with universities. And um, Jan knew the professor, Sascha Leupold, from Rhein-Main University. That is how the, the connection was established. And that's why Jan was also part of the seminars in uh, Wiesbaden. Uh, so yeah, the, the second seminar, as I said, was the summer school. Um, if you go a bit up, uh, we can check out the pictures. So this was the first seminar. Okay. A bit down. Uh, this one, 30 maybe? And 31. Yeah, exactly. Here you can see the pictures where, where the students started um, doing the, the big 
the 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 clay bricks, bricks. and yep. then we try to yeah exactly we try to combine uh, clay and bamboo uh, we tried out a lot of different details that we planned and designed at the first seminar and just try it try it all up using bamboo on different ways with different cuts uh, with steel um, for example like connections with steel uh, some other connections um, the house we had we had the challenge by with the the basement we tried out different mm -hmm. uh, details for the basement and uh, yeah, as you can see in the pictures just a lot of different details a lot of just trying out on the practical way um yeah in the end it was a super nice work workshop uh, i really enjoyed the great week a lot of work but uh, i think in the end it was a nice nice product we uh, we constructed yeah then Absolutely, the third... it's cool that you've been able to merge the adobe or clay bricks with the bamboo um, because yeah. it really makes sense also from personal um, experience. Um, we, you can do bamboo walls, but uh, probably a, a adobe wall, just for the wall being, uh, will have better, um, like, um, uh, better results regarding uh, hot temperatures and cool temperatures because the bamboo wall will always be like, thinner uh, so it, the, the isolation and all that of the clay is, is is way better for sure but still the bamboo is amazing yeah. for all the other structural uh, thing for sure yeah cool. yeah and we also um realized that we did some some mistakes uh with, with uh, using bamboo and using using clay for example but it was it was good because from these mistakes we learned a lot so one to ghana we already we always already had some experience and already knew like the critical points in the construction. Um, so could you, could you so share yeah, was, maybe one critical sad. point for for people building in bamboo? I would say it was just simply the height of the basement, for example, and also the rooftop, like the distance of the rooftop, so, should have had a bit more space, um, mm -hmm. a bit longer rooftop because then the water is is running, um, running better on the ground and it's not uh, destroying the the clay wall for, the clay. for example so, yeah, so in should, other words from lifted the, it up a bit more the roof was too short on the sides when the water like the rain fell the the from the roof it was like already like um um kind of er making erosion of the adobe um clay wall right just the the, the water yeah we, we just yeah, we just realized that a few months afterwards, and it's still standing, so it's not a, a critical mistake, but we yeah, just but it's learned about this. So next time we should lift the basement a bit up and take take care about the, the length of the rooftop. Yeah, I would it's, say this were a... like two nice findings. Mm, absolutely. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, the, the third seminar was the excursion to Ghana, so the on-site mm -hmm. project. Um, where we constructed the bamboo treatment area, or more or less the, the rooftop of the of the bamboo treatment area in, in Ghana, uh, also for the NGO Quarka for Ghana, we built um, these frames that you can see here, and also the frame that we can see at the drawn picture. So mm -hmm. also, I would say a quite easy uh, frame with easy details, but for us. With uh, not that much experience, it was a good, um, yeah, practical starting point in the project like this. Mm -hmm. And also, cool. yeah, yeah, also yeah. we had the. Sorry. No, pretty pretty cool to like pre, um, pre construction of the frame and then just pull them up and uh, connect them together, basically, right? Yeah, exactly. And pulling them up wasn't that that easy <laughs> like in the theory right. we thought we, we can just pull it up and everything was fine but since also the basement and everything was quite changing the formwork for the basement as well uh, yeah it wasn't that easy but we we managed to to pull it up and we also managed to yeah um we managed to do the right formwork in order to uh, use it again this was a huge challenge because we didn't have that many um uh, wood for the formwork, so it was we had to really plan the the formwork for the for the basement in, before and yeah plan it in order to use it again. 
Awesome. And and the special thing here maybe to mention is uh, currently there is just the Bambusa vulgaris, which is the golden bamboo or the yellow bamboo um, in Ghana, right? And that was like your main construction material, which is yeah. Uh, yes. atypical for, for bamboo and even more for a European uh, bamboo construction because normally um, uh, in Europe we use more like Guaduan guzifolia, which is imported from Colombia or from somewhere in Latin America. And obviously they don't have that yet or at all in, yeah. in Africa. So you have to use what's available right now. And um, mm. that's challenging because it has it, it doesn't have like the same nice properties of the of the Guadua. But still, it's mm. still possible to do stuff. And um, I think that's also interesting to show that um, it's not black and white with bamboo. You, you just have to adapt to what you have and um, uh, work with it. At the end, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you said, not, not the perfect properties, and also not really straight bamboo. It's a bit more curved bamboo. But I mean, in the end, <laughs> if we use bamboo, which is imported, or bamboo from another region, um, I think it would be, yeah, it would be the, the wrong way to to deal with the, Absolutely. the local it makes materials. No sense. Yeah. I, imagine yeah. having to transport bamboo as example from Colombia to Ghana uh, to say that's sustainable. <laughs> That yeah, would be exactly. kind of a and joke. also to, to tell the people it's it's a good uh, material it's, for it's you cheap. to work with and it's yeah. also cheap and it's accessible. Yeah, it yeah, would, would have yeah. been the, the wrong way to, to start this project. Yeah. So in the end, maybe it's not the, the nicest bamboo and the best bamboo for this construction. But uh, yeah, considering the other things we just talked about, it was the right decision to use. And maybe we have to mention here that the future will look uh, brighter because people like uh, Polino are, are working on a bamboo, um, uh, planting bamboo. So and other people are planting bamboo in all of Africa. So um, the future actually looks looks much better. It's um, I don't know what kind of bamboo, maybe giant bamboo for sure, Dendrocalamus. And and you know what kind of bamboo? Um, Paulino is is growing on his plot. Uh, I just know he has different species, and he's trying to yeah. find out which one is the best and how the differences look like when okay. the most where the potential is the different plants. Yeah. So yeah, okay, that's cool. I'll have a, a podcast very soon with with Paulino regarding that. I'm going to deep dive into that to see uh, nice, uh, nice, yeah. what what bamboo species um, he has growing and how they're growing because it, it's uh, always very different. And this will impact for sure a future bamboo projects um, a lot if you have more uh, different bamboos available, of course. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and it would create also new economies where uh, until now probably like growing bamboo was not a business. And if Paulino can show that it is, well, other people will start growing bamboo and more people will start building bamboo. And the bamboo construction kit will really be something people will be using because there is bamboo. <laughs> so yeah, everything yeah. That's... works together at the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's also what I missed uh, some minutes ago. So um, Paulino also wrote uh, his master thesis about the bamboo construction kit. That's that, that's what what it was. Why it was nice um, to meet Paulino because we had nearly the same vision and the same idea of the kid, and that's why we um, also had the seminar in Mozambique together for the Bamboo Structure Kid because uh, Paulino is Mozambican and that it was easy to go there to um, yeah, see his project and his farm and to together and to together work on the Bamboo construction Kid with the. Students I can also Mozambique imagine Germany. for the, the bamboo seminar um, students that um, this is like a huge um, added value, like to really see bamboo growing, to see the challenges on site, you know, not just uh, see videos or photos or, or talk about something like far away, but really touch the bamboo, have uh, transport some bamboo. And, and like, yeah. um, I don't know. For you, it was not the first time, obviously, to see probably a bamboo plantation, or or see, or did you have any like first times there um, regarding bamboo? Anything you keep in mind, like um, uh, where you see, say, "Hey, uh, I've never seen uh, the the bamboo seedlings like that," or, or any. My first contact you... to bamboo was in the Philippines, so already mm -hmm. eight, eight years away. ago. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a long time ago and far away. <laughs> It was in Africa, but this was my first contact. 
um, I also saw a stealth village, if it's the right English term for it, where you use mm -hmm. bubble uh, to stay in the warship. The, and afterwards, I saw the bubble uh, plantation, a small bubble plantation in Ghana, plus the, the bullet land of Gorkla to Ghana, plus the mm -hmm. bubble we used for our construction. I saw this one and the one of um, Bodino. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so the one near Grow Call for Ghana is the um, Bambusa vulgaris or the golden bamboo, because that's the one you use, right? So they, they exactly, did a plantation yeah. of, of that bamboo, yeah. It's pretty funny that this is like number one uh, bamboo, which is available worldwide, but because people choose to plant it first, and, and most mm. of the people seems like they use this bamboo because it's yellow, it's beautiful, and blah, blah, blah. But they don't really mm. know about all the features of all the other bamboos who would also grow. And, and thus, uh, this means we have to build first with that bamboo because that's the one which is available <laughs> compared yeah, to definitely. all the other bamboo, which I don't know even if Guadua will grow in Africa. I think some people are trying to grow Guadua, but Guadua is endemic to Latin America. So it's a, it's a different setup. And also um, the, the um, Filostaches um, from Asia uh, is um, also kind of a other um, uh, uh, setting there. So um, maybe it's too hot in tropical or semi-tropical uh, places. But I'm sure there is bamboo for everywhere. So that's the cool thing about bamboo. Between the 1,500 yeah. species, uh, you can always find a few bamboo who very well adapt to, to wherever you want to plant bamboo. Unless you're in Antarctica, yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah, a bit more challenging. <laughs> but yeah, I think in the end, it's it's very essential that people like Paulino just try out, try out mm -hmm. using bamboo in Africa, try out planting bamboo, and then in the second point to transfer the knowledge about um, which plants, uh, where did they plant, uh, the specific species and uh, yeah, how they how they treated the bamboo or, and how they harvested. So yeah, a lot of different things they need to transfer after uh, they had these first yeah bamboo bamboo projects. In the Absolutely, knowledge has to be shared. Ideally, open source. Maybe I don't know if you talked also to Bamboo Uganda. I did a podcast with them like a year ago. Also super interesting. I'm right, he's a Belgian and he's setting up a whole bamboo operation in Uganda. Similar challenges regarding the Bambusa vulgaris, which is available and no other. So they also did the building mm. with Bambusa vulgaris and um, it, it worked fine. But um, yeah, it's not ideal. So very similar mm. situation. Um, and also they're planting bamboo because uh, the more bamboo that will be planted, the, the more they can build with bamboo. So, um, yeah, that's uh, another podcast I'll, I'll link somewhere over here, which is uh, Bamboo yeah. Uganda. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. Yeah. I definitely yeah. Hear, hear the podcast afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, um, any um, conclusions or, or uh, do you have any recommendations for um, your future um, seminar students or, or young people who um, are interested into a regenerative um, construction or climate friendly construction how it's called at the university um yes definitely i would say um due to the fact that climate change affects all of us we should uh, globally connect with each other think and act globally because i mean in the end we have to uh, uh, work together on this whole topic of climate change and also construct it on a climate friendly way so yeah, I would say doing international workshops, connecting people with the same mindset, uh, working interdisciplinary, um, and also try to enhance the cross-border visions of people, um, and yeah, trying to I don't know, I would say think global and act global, um, as we did in a few uh, projects um, that we just talked about, and yeah, I'm very happy and appreciate. Also, the fact that I'm able to um, conduct these seminars at the university. Um, yeah, especially thank you to Sasha Lundqvall for giving me the chance. And yeah, I hope that in the future, more students are interested in our workshops because in the first five uh, workshops, there were, were already a lot of students interested in these different um, visions of our seminars. So hopefully in the future, like, Still, people are interested in these topics, uh, but I'm quite sure because 
the feedback of the students was always really good and they really enjoyed working with those topics, especially with polar welding of other cultures, other nations, nationalities. So yeah, I think this is the yeah, main uh, idea of how to deal with these challenges. Absolutely. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think this is one of the, the, the key topics in future also like to, to um, relearn to use uh, intelligent materials such as um, bamboo or clay, you know, in modern constructions, not just in third world countries. So it's cool that the, the university there, the Rhine mine is um, investing into that and is doing this proactively because others are just talking about it and they're actually doing it. So it's, it's a pioneer work compared to other um, institutions. Um, and um, yes, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. That's why also you're here and you're talking about it at the Think Babu podcast. So other people uh, get to know about it and see what's being done and hopefully get inspiration and uh, also start their own uh, thing with Bamboo and we get more people on board. Yeah. Yeah. And I also try, like my personal goal is to also try to infect people with the, I would say, Halo virus. Um, as I did in, in Wiesbaden, because when I came there, they didn't have contact to bamboo at all. Like I didn't have contact to bamboo before my master thesis. So try to infect people with bamboo or some other uh, sustainable materials. And then if we share knowledge, it's a, it's a good, good way for the future. And also my personal, the second personal goal would be to, um, get to de develop the bamboo instruction kit that we talked about mm -hmm. and maybe to build a prototype in the next years. So I already checked out some plot of lands with, uh, with, um, Paulino in Mozambique. So maybe mm -hmm. one day there's a possibility to, uh, it just try out the first prototype and see all the one construction kit is, uh, maybe if we have to change it, if it's already well done, um, okay, I would say these are my goals for the future. Awesome. And if anybody wants to join or help there or learn there, uh, they can contact you now on Instagram. I think you have Instagram, right? Yes, sure. Yes, exactly. They yeah. can just contact what me was on Instagram. Uh, my name is you... just Christoph, but with mm -hmm. five O's. Don't ask me why. Okay. But it's an yeah. easy, easy name. Okay. I would say. But maybe you can just, okay. you can also um, work the name into the description of the podcast episode. Yeah, we'll do that. Absolutely. All right. Uh, did we have, um, yeah, because you're also on LinkedIn, but I think it's easier to contact on, on Instagram for first contact. And, um, yeah, I would say yeah. Instagram is easier and but, okay. yeah, you can also use, use the LinkedIn if you prefer this. Okay. I'll, I'll share the, the, um, links on the, the blog post and, um, yeah, I think, um, we have, um, gotten to the end of the podcast so again chris thanks for sharing um your um bamboo story on think bamboo um for everybody who's not yet subscribed do not forget to subscribe on think bamboo on youtube uh, instagram um, spotify um, twitter x and um yeah start planting bamboo today exactly uh, thank you so much for inviting me jj uh, really appreciate this. I think we had a nice You're discussion. Welcome. I really enjoyed. Absolutely. Same here. Take care, man. Talk to you yeah, soon. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you, JJ. Bye-bye.